Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to session 1 of training and development. Today, in this session, we will embark on a journey into the realms of training and development, which is not just a buzzword, but the very backbone of the organizational growth and success. In today's business landscape, where change is the only constant, the need for continuous learning and development has never been more crucial than ever before. Whether you are a small startup or a multinational corporation, navigating global markets, the ability to adapt, innovate and stay ahead of the curve is something that sets you apart and that makes you the winner from the rest. So why is this training and development so very vital? Before we answer this question, I would like to take you through the various topics that are going to be covered in today's session. In today's session, we will take a deep dive in, into the foundation of training and development. The introduction to training and development. Why is training and development important and how does it contribute to the organizational growth? And last but not the least, we are going to touch upon some of the important training concepts which will set our base for understanding training and development right. So what is training? Training is a learning process that involves the acquisition of knowledge, sharpening of skills, concepts, rules or changing of attitudes and behaviors to enhance the performance of employees. So training is an activity which leads to skilled behavior. It's not what you want in life, but it's about knowing how to reach it right. It's not where you want to go, but it's knowing about how to get there. So teaching, training does it all. Now it's time to understand the various objectives of training and development. Why do we need training and development and what are the various objectives of training and development? The very first objective of training and development is optimum utilization of human resources. So this concept revolves around effectively leveraging the skills, knowledge and capabilities of employees to achieve organizational goals and objectives. Optimum utilization requires aligning the skills and talents of the employees which are assigned to them. It involves ensuring that employees are placed in roles where they can contribute most effectively, maximizing their potential contribution towards the organization. There is about development of human resources. So human resource development focuses on enhancing the capabilities, competencies and the potential of employees through training, education, developmental program, professional development program, so on and so forth. So it encompasses various activities and aimed at improving the knowledge, attitude, abilities, skills of the individuals to enable them to perform their current roles in an effective manner. After this, we come to the third objective of training and development. So the third objective of training and development is about development of skills of the employees. We are very well aware of the fact that there are multiple skills existing in the organization which contribute towards the organizational skill inventory. Now, in order to hone the skills of the individuals, in order to hone the capabilities of the individuals, what we really need to do is we need to focus on developing these skills of the employees. 
So, development of skills can occur through various methods by you know it includes a lot of formal training methods, it includes a lot of on the job training methods, a lot of uh, self study, peer mentoring and participation professional activities, associations, communities etcetera. So, development of skills of the employees can happen through adequate training to the individuals and this is one reason why training and development assumes a lot of significance. As it is said, if you feed a person for a day, you feed him for a day, but if you teach him how to fish, you feed him for the entire life. So, this is the essence of training and development. Now, I would like to present before you some important startling statistics, which clearly tell us about the impact of training. According to a study by the Association for Talent Development, companies that offer comprehensive training programs have a staggering 218 percent high income per employee than those with the ineffective training. So, this tells about the essence of training. If the organizations can really benefit from you know imparting adequate kind of skills and capabilities to their individuals, then certainly they are able to experience that staggering growth also. So, this was a study which was conducted in context of understanding how comprehensive training programs can lead to staggering higher income per employee in the organization. So, a 218 percent increase in income per employee that is not just a marginal improvement, it is a significant leap forward in terms of organizational success and profitability. So, training can be considered as an investment because the moment we start adequately and appropriately start spending on the training programs and ensure that the training is reinforced in the organization well, we can also ensure that the organizational success and profitability is enhanced to a large extent. Now, we have some more important statistics which would highlight how training and development can create a lot of difference. And I think this would serve as a very, very big impetus for all of us to understand why is it important to understand this subject and hone our skills in imparting the training and development also. The very first thing is companies earn over double the income per employee when they offer employee training leading to a 24 percent higher profit rate margin. A global survey found that companies offering training are 17 percent more productive and 21 percent more profitable. Another survey found that almost 6 out of every 10 workers believe that training helps them to perform their jobs better, with 51 percent stating that it gives them more confidence and 41 percent mentioning improved time management skills. So, a lot of capabilities of the individuals can be hold, a lot of skills can be improved by means of adequate training to the employees. That is the reason why many of the organizations these days are understanding the essence of imparting the training to their employees and consider it as an investment which definitely gives them a good return on investment. Nearly half of all fortune 500 companies use employee training to remain competitive focusing on essential skills like conducting internal skills gap assessment, tracking the business KPIs and staying updated on industry trends. So, definitely these organizations need no introduction. When you talk about fortune 500 companies, they speak volume about themselves because of multiple reasons. So, these organizations are found to be using employee training to remain competitive in the market, to stay ahead of the competition in the market, to remain focused on some of the important skills like conducting internal skill gap assessments, to keep a tap, uh, tap on uh, the key performance indicators tracking for the employees and to stay them updated on industry trends. Then 45 percent of the workers are more likely to stay at their current job if their employers offer more training. So, in a way it is very, very instrumental in ensuring employee retention rate, emphasizing the importance of training in employee retention. Companies invest between 500 dollar and 3000 dollar per employees in training with 57 percent of the organizations allocating this amount for training purposes. 
the US spends around 200 billion dollar annually on corporate training programs but only 10% of this expenditure delivers meaningful results highlighting the need for more effective training strategies so it's not just about understanding the essence of training and imparting the training but it's also about understanding the need for training and then appropriately designing the training and development programs for the employees so that the meaningful results can be obtained and the individual behaviors can be changed and also the productivity can be improved to a large extent. Companies that offer comprehensive training programs have 218% higher income per employee and a 24% higher profit margin compared to those without formalized training programs. So I think these startling statistics speak volume about themselves and make us understand the essence of training and also underscore the significant impact of employees training on certain aspects such as organization fostering a culture of creativity in the organization, fostering a culture of continuous improvement in the organizations, then uh, they are again important for uh, the employee satisfaction enhancement, they are important for employee retention in the organization certainly by means of importing the right kind of training and development programs for the employees the organization can raise their profitability and productivity so on and so forth now i would like to present before you a small caselet imagine a mid sized technology company struggling to keep up with rapidly evolving market trends and technological advancements so recognizing the importance of staying ahead of the curve, the company decides to invest in comprehensive training program for its employees. So this organization wants to keep itself abreast of the changes which are happening in the organizations, in the industry and the technological advancements more primarily. So this organization decides to invest in the comprehensive training programs for its employees. Over the course of several months, the employees undergo intensive training sessions primarily focusing upon software development techniques, project management methodologies and customer centric design principles. As a result of this investment in their professional developments, employees not only feel more equipped to, talent, uh, you know, to tackle certain challenges and seize opportunities, but also experience a renewed sense of purpose and fulfillment in their jobs, which is one of the most important element that contribute towards individuals success in the organization and perhaps an important factor for ensuring the organizational success and growth too. So job satisfaction levels soared leading to lower turnover rates and higher employee retention. Furthermore, armed with new skills and knowledge, employees began to th begin to think outside the box, experimenting with innovative ideas and solutions. So this definitely created and cultivated a culture of creativity within the organization which made the individuals to go you know far in terms of creativity and innovation culture development which not only drives the company's growth but also its position as a leader in the industry. So this case is I think uh, one of the very important aspects that highlights, I mean this uh, particular case really uh, highlights a lot of aspects related to how training can be beneficial to the organization and how this organization to a large extent was benefited using such kind of ploys related to training and development. Now uh, let's have a look around the nature of changing organizations today. So when you talk about the changing organization, we mean that the nature of organizations today is changing. The pattern in which the organizations which used to operate and some part of time is, in, is uh, you know, changing at this hour. Like for example, we may start with certain points here, beginning with reduced hierarchical structure. Traditionally, the organizations used to operate with a very strict hierarchical structure. Usually, these structures used to be tall in nature, but now with advent of time, it has been seen that the a reduction in the hierarchical structure is experienced by the organization. They are preferring to go for more of flat structure 
instead of tall structure. So, in tall structure what used to happen was the decision making authority used to flow from top to bottom. No decentralization of authority used to actually happen. But these days organization have shifted to a mode. They have shifted to reduced hierarchical structure mode wherein flat structure is given way to and more decentralization of the decision making uh, authority is something that is being given way to. So, uh, let us talk about the kind of changing organization in which uh, reduced hierarchical structure is one of the important features. These days organizations want to uh, focus more on the flat structure rather than focusing on tall structures. And when we talk about flat structure, it means lower levels in the hierarchy, I mean uh, lesser levels in the hierarchy instead of uh, a structure in which the decision making authority used to flow from top to bottom and uh, there used to be more number of levels. So, flat structure is being adopted because of the reason that it is felt that by reducing the hierarchical levels, organizations can improve communication. They can improve communication, they can increase flexibility to the individuals and accelerate the decision making processes. Then the second aspect is blurred boundaries. Now in today's interconnected world, if you see the boundary between different departments, the boundaries that exist, exist between the various functions that are performed in the organization and organizations, they are becoming increasingly blurred. So this blurring of boundaries can foster collaborations and also can cultivate a culture of more of networking and innovation development in the organization. For example, teams from different departments may come together to work and the skills get uh, skill uh, more of skill sets can be brought to the table. Blurred boundaries also enable the organization to cope with the changes better and respond to effectively more effectively to complex challenges that require multidisciplinary approaches. Now the third aspect in this context is teams as bi basic building blocks. Now, when we say teams as basic building blocks, what does it say? It says that rather than relying solely on traditional departmental structures, many organizations these days are shifting towards a team based approach with cross functional teams formed to tackle specific projects or to cater to various objectives of the organization. And this definitely allows for greater flexibility they are able to focus on outcomes better and definitely it brings in a lot of creativity culture in the organization and also the culture of collaboration within the organization. And last but not the least is new management perspective. So changing organizations offer require a shift in the management perspective. Instead of simply directing and controlling the employees, managers are increasingly seen as facilitators. There are new concepts picking up in the organization. More of the emphasis is being placed on mentoring of the employees. More emphasis is being placed on coaching of the employees, right? There is a concept called as friendship, which is picking up. Friendship or friendship is something which is a culmination of three words in which the first word is the friend, then is the mentor and the leader. So such kind of things are also picking up in the organizations and def definitely they are showing a way ahead to foster a culture of more of training and development in the organizations. Now moving to the next slide which talks about models of training. We will talk about two models of training, there are multiple models of training which exist but in today's session, we are going to focus primarily on two models of training. The very first being systematic model of training and the second one being the traditional model of training. Now, what is the systematic model of training? Let me just take you through the important aspects of systematic models of training. So, systematic model of training is something which has basically got five important 
you know steps. It starts with analyzing and identifying the training needs. Then after that designing and providing the training to meet the identified needs of the individuals. Then it's about developing the training modules, implementing the training to the individuals in an appropriate manner and finally evaluating the training. So it is something which assumes a lot of significance today and primarily when we talk about you know systematic model of training it starts with understanding what are the needs of the training. At what level do we actually need training? What are the various pain areas? And these pain areas can be traced out in context of the organization as a whole, wherein the business environment might have a bearing in pursuit of existing conditions and therefore it might be impacting the organization and therefore they might, might be realizing the need for training in the organization. For example, if some technological changes happen, if some kind of technological uh, advancement uh, happen in the technological environment, then definitely it is likely to impact the organization. And in such situations, it is important to identify what all areas, uh, in what all areas do we actually need training. Then after that, we have designing and providing training to meet the identified needs. So at this step what we do is we have to develop the appropriate models of training wherein we will be discussing uh, several aspects. There are several uh, things which are included in it. It is a separate subject in itself wherein uh, we try to put together all these strands related to how the training needs to be designed for the employees, what needs to be done to identify uh, the right kind of objectives for the employees and to provide training to meet the identified needs. And then we develop the right kind of platforms uh, for the individuals to learn several things. Finally comes the aspect related to implementing the training. So when it comes to implementing the training, it is as important, uh, important as identifying the needs of the training. It is very important for us to understand that training needs to be implemented well. And finally, after we are through with implementing the training, taking into consideration the various aspects of the environment that the training is given in, last but not the least, we need to evaluate the training need. That is, we need to understand and we need to evaluate that whether the training which was imparted to the individuals was successful or not. Did the people actually learn something out of it or not? Was there some kind of behavioral, uh, you know, behavioral uh, change as a consequence of the training which was impact, you know, which was imparted to the people or not? So we have several methods. Like for example, we may go for quantitative assessments. We may go for qualitative assessments to evaluate the training which is imparted to the individuals. So this was about systematic model of training. Next is traditional model of training. So when it comes to traditional model of training, it is something that focuses on organization as a whole. So there are two loops primarily which, has, uh, which are associated with the transitional model of training. One being the inner loop and another being, being the outer loop. So outer loop describes the vision, the mission and values of the organization on the basis of which the training model is executed. So if this is the outer loop, there is an inner loop also that has to be taken care of. The outer loop primarily comprises vision, mission, values of the organization. So what is vision? Vision is something that you articulate for the future. It focuses on the milestone that the organization aims to achieve after a defined point of time. A vision statement tells that whether organization sees itself or where the organization sees itself after a few years down the line. A vision may include setting a role model or bringing some internal transformation or maybe promising to meet some other deadlines. Then is the mission. So these are all the components of the outer loop. The second aspect is mission. So 
So mission explains the reasons for organization's existence. It identifies the position in the community. The reason for developing a mission statement is to motivate, inspire, and inform the employees regarding the organization. So the mission statement tells about the identity that how organization would like to be viewed by the customers, by the employees, and all other stakeholders. Next is values. Values are the translations of vision and mission into communicable ideas. So it reflects the deeply held values of the organization and is independent of the current industry environment. So all organizations have their own sets of values which they follow. For example, the values may be the social responsibility that the organization is assuming, the excellent customer service that it delivers to its customers. So by means of all these things, I think it's very, very clear that the model, the transitional model of training has two loops, the inner loop and the outer loop. Outer loop comprises all the things related to vision, mission and values of the organization. And the inner loop comprises the various elements related to identifying the training needs, then uh, developing the uh, training objectives, implementing the training program and finally evaluating and everything has to be aligned with the outer loop in order to successfully run the training program. So this was all about the various aspects of uh, the models of training. And now we come to some of the key training concepts. When we talk about the three, three uh, you know, key training concepts, it's very important for us to have a look at four important things. The very first aspect is need assessment. So when we talk about need assessment, it is about understanding the pain areas. It's about understanding where do we need the training for our employees. It's about understanding where the organization needs training. It's about understanding which task involved uh, training needs. It's about in, uh, understanding which individual in the organization is actually looking out for the training in the organization. So after we have thoroughly understood the training needs, then it gets very easy for the organizations to develop the training objectives. And after that, if you know about the training objectives, you can think on the lines of developing the training program for your employees. So definitely uh, need assessment has its own important role to play and we have to be very very wise in understanding how you know training actually happens and how do we assess the training need. Another slide on training needs analysis talks about it being the first step in training and development program. Let me tell you that we have a separate session which would clearly elucidate and would primarily highlight the various aspects of training need analysis. And is going to uh, talk about several methods which can be used to understand the training need analysis. Training cannot happen without understanding the need of it. And if we are just imparting training for the heck of it, the kind of return which can be generated out of it would also be very, very less. It is because of the reason that we do not understand the need of training well that the outcome in terms of organizational success and growth also does not happen. So let us uh, take a moment to understand it first. So the assessment begins with the need which can be identified in several ways which we will be discussing in the sub, uh, you know, subsequent slides. So it is about uh, identifying the gap between what is currently in place and what is needed. Now the gap can include discrepancies, differences between what the organization expects to happen and what actually happens. It is about identifying the gaps between the current and desired job performance of the individuals. For example, we are expecting our employees to behave in a certain way in the organization. We are expecting our employees to you know, be productive in a certain way. We are expecting our employees to work and perform the operations in a certain way. 
but what is actually happening might be a little disaligned. So, how to bridge this gap and how to ensure that your employees are actually working as per the uh, expectations of yours can be bridged by means of adequate training and development programs for the employees. Now, existing and desired competencies and skills can also be understood. So, many organizations they have they maintain a good repository of the kind of uh, skills they have the employees have. So, together it is called as the skill inventory of the organization. So, after understanding the skill inventory of the organization and after seeing what are the skills uh, and uh, you know existing and desired uh, competencies um, we are looking out for and what are the existing set of competencies that uh, we have, we can bridge or we can figure out what is actually needed and then we can work towards making things happen in the manner we want to. So, let us take a moment to consider some compelling statistics to underscore the importance of need assessment. So, according to a survey by Society for Human Resource Management, a staggering 87 percent of HR professionals believe that conducting a need assessment is critical for effective training initiatives. So, this statistic speak volume about the consensus among the industry professionals regarding the necessity for need assessment in the training process. So, by identifying in a systematic fashion the training needs organization can allocate resources more efficiently and more appropriately and this is how the impact of training can be maximized after we are taking the cognizance of the needs of people who are operating in the organization, the need of the organization, the need of the environment that an organization is operating in, we are able to then maximize the impact of the training program which we get for the employees or which we deliver to the employees. Next we come to several learning styles. Again, this is one of the most important key concept of training which is a learning style. So, this is something that usually people ignore, but this is something that needs to be given a lot of importance while we are developing the training programs and we are imparting the training programs. So, as individuals we all have unique preferences and uh, tendencies when it comes to learning and how we learn the best. So, understanding these learning styles is essential for developing the training programs that resonate with diverse audiences and maximize the learning outcomes. So, there are two important aspects that have to be addressed. One is the learning objectives which need to be communicated to the people in the beginning itself and ultimately the learning outcomes also. So, the learning outcomes can be maximized if we better understand the learning preferences of people. Today, if we see you know many of the platforms which are developed for facilitating a good user interface for the purpose of training can definitely bring about a lot of benefits in the way in which the things are learned. So, there are several methods and there are several learning styles you may say including the you know the visual style, the auditory, the kinesthetics and many more. So, each style has its own implication for training design as certain methods may be more effective for certain le learners and some methods may not be. So, let us talk about the visual learners. So, there are some learners which are considered to be the visual learners. These visual learners generally prefer to process information through visual aids such as if you are going to bring about more of charts and diagrams, graphs and information, uh, you know videos etcetera, they benefit from seeing that information which is presented in the form of structured and organized manner. So, when design, when designing training for visual learners, consider incorporating more of PowerPoint presentation. You may use more of infographics, you may go for more of video tutorials for your work employees. So, video tutorials can really be very very engaging for them. You may go for some kind of mind maps which is again becoming very very popular in uh, the arena of training these days. Then uh, making use of more of flip charts 
and uh, there are several platforms which help you in uh, you know uh, going for a quick uh, visual aesthetics and visual treat for your learners. For example, uh, there are several platforms which are used by many of the organizations these days to uh, foster a culture of uh, you know foster a culture of good interface and good uh, interaction between the user and the trainer. Now next is uh, auditory learners. So these auditory learners as the name itself suggests they learn best through listening and verbal instructions. They prefer to absorb information through lectures. They would prefer more of discussions, they would listen to more of podcasts, they would prefer to go for more of lectures, they would look, look out for more of uh, audio recordings and this facilitates their learning. So when designing training for such auditory learners, you may consider incorporating some you know engaging lectures some group discussions or maybe uh, some good debates, some role playing activities will also work well for them because then uh, maybe a storytelling mechanism incorporated or you know narrative based learning experience for their employees can really does a, can really do a lot of wonder. So, moving on to kinesthetic learners, so this was about visual learners and auditory learners, you have to be very wise and you have to be very very careful while choosing uh, the right kind of medium to attract and to facilitate the learning for the kind of learners you have. So kinesthetic being the third one, kinesthetic learners they learn best through hands on activities. And they would pay a lot of emphasis on something called as physical experiences. They would de definitely prefer to engage with material through movement, touch, manipulation, etc. So, when designing training programs for uh, the kinesthetic learners, you may consider incorporating some kind of interactive workshop where there is a lot of hands on training sessions for your employees, for your employees some kind of role playing sessions for your employees, some kind of field trips or you know visits to your employees and then uh, maybe some kind of demonstrations can be shown to them wherein they, they get the touch and feel uh, aspect to retain what they have learnt and to reinforce the learning that they have had and uh, maybe we can have some kind of interactive games for our people or maybe we have some kind of activities specifically designed uh, that that you know allows a lot of movement such as team building exercises can be there, there can be more of puzzles, there can be something that you know uh, th that facilitates some kind of brainstorming among these employees. So practically it is not possible to design separate training programs for the visual learners, for the auditory learners, for the kinesthetic learners because uh, nobody is 100 percent visual learner. 100 percent auditory learner and 100 percent kinesthetic learner. So usually it is experienced, it is seen that there is a blend of different kinds of techniques that people use to learn. So definitely in order to foster a good learning environment in the organization and to facilitate good training for your employees, what we may do is we may use blend of such techniques and after using these blend of techniques we can make our training program more effective. Like for example, if you are including more of uh, you know field based activities in the organizations and then you are uh, coming up with good visual um, aspects for your learners they, that can really create a lot of difference. And in addition to these primary uh, learning styles it is essential to consider the context and it is essential to consider some other factors also that can impact learning. For example, there can be several fa factors, for example the context in which you are imparting the training that is the cultural differences which exist among the employees. Then we may have individual preferences, so when it comes to individual preferences you may allow participants to choose their preferred you know learning methods or provide options uh, to go for some such kind of thing. Then you may make use of multi-sensory uh, approaches and you can make your program more accessible. Uh, to the individuals primarily who are suffering from some kind of disability or uh, uh, this can, and this can be done by facilitating 
uh, them with providing alternative formats of learning and accommodations as needed. So, these factors have to be considered while designing the training program and therefore, it becomes important for us to take these important things into consideration. Now, uh, an important highlight here is a research from Journal of Applied Psychology. So, this research from Journal of Applied Psychology sheds light on the diversity of learning preference among employees. According to this research, while 65 percent of the population are visual learners, 30 percent prefer auditory learning, 5 percent prefer kinesthetic learning. So, these statistics highlight the importance of incorporating a variety of learning methods into your training programs to accommodate different learning styles. Now, by catering to the preferences of your learners, you can engage, you can enhance their engagement, you can uh, make them retain well uh, the key takeaways of the learning program and the training programs and overall effectiveness can also be enhanced by means of these training methods. So, it is important for us to understand these aspects and uh, now we move to the third aspect that is essence of feedback and evaluation. Now, when it comes to essence of feedback and evaluation, it is about understanding why is it important to get the appropriate kind of feedback from the employees and why is it important to evaluate the training programs. I mean, once you have imparted the training to the employees, many of the organizations just put in a lot of money in training their employees, but they do not focus on the feedback mechanism. The primarily, uh, the primary objective of the training programs which are imparted, you know, it gets uh, defeated if you are not evaluating the training program well. So, it is very important for us to understand the essence of feedback and evaluation in the training because it will facilitate improvement in the training, it will be a good motivation for the employees also, it will increase a lot of accountability, then there are ways by means of which you can identify the gaps which exist and which will further give way to the various trainings that need to be imparted in the future also. It helps in adaptation, it helps in enhancing and assuring the quality in the training programs and also it facilitates con continuous learning. So, this is the essence of feedback and evaluation and it is very important for us to understand that feedback and evaluation are some of the important aspects that need to be addressed and taken care of. So, there was a study which was published in Harvard Business Review and it specifically revealed that employees who receive regular feedback are three times more likely to be engaged at work. Though this study is primarily related to the you know the essence of regular feedback in the organization, the constructive feedback in the organization, but the same kind of thing can be replicated specifically in context of training also. So, if training feedback is given to the individuals and we really want to reinforce the training uh, in the organization, then only the change will happen. So, basically uh, feedback and evaluation are definitely the important mechanisms for training. Uh, before we uh, move further, I would just like to highlight some of the very important aspects, one of the key concept of uh, training that I missed out on and that is called as the various methods of training. So, when it comes to training, the training has to be imparted in various methods and there can be different methods uh, such as classroom training, e-training uh, methods can be there, there can be knowledge retention programs also. So, uh, I would just like to focus on some of the methods of training. So, some of the important methods of training can be uh, the on the job methods of training and off the job methods of training. We will not delve deeper into the various aspects of training and various methods of training, but I would just like to highlight some of the important you know uh, training uh, mechanisms or training methods that can be imparted. So, what are they and uh, how can they really foster a culture of creativity within the organization. Now, uh, the very first method in this context could be lecture method. There can be some kind of interactive workshops for your employees 
which would employ uh, which would uh, employ some kind of hands on training for the employees the interactive exercises for the people to engage the participants and uh, moreover there can be some other workshops also which can be designed primarily for people there can be an element of role playing which is again gaining a lot of momentum these days because uh, people assume themselves to be into uh, a particular role when they are made to do some kind of exercise related to role playing then uh, we can even have uh, something called as case studies method which can be employed so this case study method is something related to improving the cognitive skills of the individual so depending upon the training needs depending upon the training needs to enhance the technical aspects uh, to enhance the cognitive aspects or maybe the interpersonal aspects of the individuals we may choose from amongst a variety of training methods that we have the one that suits an individual the most so this was about uh, the fourth important aspect or fourth important key concept of training so in context of uh, understanding the essence of feedback and evaluation it's very important for us to understand how will we measure the training effectiveness so how the training program is going to be evaluated whether it's going to be evaluated using some kind of uh, post training assessments or is it going to be evaluated during some kind of pre training and post training assessment is something that needs to be seen very very carefully so at this point of time it's very important for us to align the evaluation criteria with the organizational goals and objectives so what do we really want to achieve by means of training program is supposed to be taken care of right in the beginning itself then continuous improvement and training evaluation has to happen and we have to understand the essence of gathering the feedback from multiple stakeholders so as to ensure that the right kind of outcomes as a consequence of training happen these days many of the organizations are using several predictive methods they are using several uh, you know qualitative methods some of the various the quantitative methods also to evaluate the training programs which happen in the organization to see the success rate of the training programs in the organization so the individuals have to be sufficiently motivated to attend the training program and when we are evaluating the training uh, we need to have concrete base for evaluation of the training of the people so this serves as the basis for identifying the gaps adapting to the various needs and ensuring the quality assurance in the organization so with this i would like to provide you a quick summary of uh, whatever we have discussed in today's lecture so today's lecture primarily focused on uh, the foundations of training and development wherein we talked about the essence of training the objectives of training we talked about several other aspects of training and development then second aspect was related to introduction to training and development which primarily focused on understanding the need and essence of training and development in the organization the kind of role it plays so by means of highlighting the essence of uh, you know training and development uh, through several case lets and startling statistics we try to focus on some important aspects of training and development then it was about importance of training and development and organizational growth which we tried to touch upon and last but not the least we tried to touch upon some of the important aspects and some of the important training concepts which primarily centered around the various learning styles the essence of need assessments uh, in training then understanding the role of feedback and evaluation training which again is uh, one of the important aspects to be addressed by the organizations and last but not the least we touched upon some methods of training which can really benefit the organizations in multiple ways so this was about session 1 of training and development 
with this i would like to thank you all